Hey, Mean DB here. Okay, so um, praise be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I just wanted to come on and uh, give you guys what He has been giving unto me. And um, I got up at like three this morning. <laughs> And that gives me like four and a half hours before the sun comes up. So we had a lot of time together. Uh, one of the things um, so today is June the 4th and he was talking to me about that grace again and he said true grace confirms the people. that They'll be confirmed. They'll know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're saved because They'll also see the power and the favor and the peace of God in their life. And he says that true grace will carry you during the great and dreadful day of the Lord, which is the great tribulation, that he wants to get you in a place to where you are confirmed and that you know that you know that God has you and that you don't have anything to worry about. And, um... He will protect you during the day of His judgment, which is the Great Tribulation, which is called the Day of the Lord. And um, so He wants to confirm you to the very end. And He is wanting you to come to Him every single day now. He said the time is very short and we don't have much time to prepare and um, he wants you to start coming to him every single day and repenting for you and your spouse for or for you and your friends, you and your family, you and your children. If it's just you, repent for you and the church. For years, I've re been repenting for the whole church. I've been repenting for pastors, of, for their sins. I've been taking much to the Lord. And a lot of the people, he gave them extra time to, you know, to come out. And um, it does help if we pray. But he wants you to repent of all lack, all loss, all debt, all sickness, all unforgiveness, and all abuse. Abuse will darken you. Um, he wants you to be whole and lacking nothing. So today he says he comes to talk to you about wholeness. To be every whit whole. That he is going to help you to break the powers of Satan off of your life. That he's going to deliver you from all and any darkness. And to give you the kingdom through Christ. His living alive word. He's going to release his living waters to you. His light and his fire. It'll burn up those enemies. And he's going to let me help to take you through and, and by prayer and confessions, proclamations. He's going to help me to bring you through to him to where you're going to be whole. Things are going to start changing in your life. That's what he's here to tell He's, he told me this this morning, and he wants me to tell it to you. And if this is something that you want, then it is yours. He wants to actually give you more than you can even think of. Um, he wants to help you attain wholeness and keep it. It's not going to be a fly-by-night thing to where you're going to be healed, and then the next day, or a week later, or a month later, or a year later, you're going to be sick again with the same thing. No. This is going to judge those powers that have kept you bound in these diseases and in these sicknesses. And it's going to be a writ. It's called a writ. R-I-T. They do a writ from heaven when great God Jehovah does a judgment and he orders Satan's kingdom to cease and to desist. And they can't do it again. They can't send out another like the one before like they can't do that see a lot of things a lot of times when you go to ministry and let's say you get touched or you receive a healing and then you're sick again a week later it's because you did not it was not handled like jesus didn't do it himself a man did it for you which you know 
God does hear our prayers and he does um, miracle signs and wonders through us because we're the vessel. But in some cases, you know, they didn't judge it. They, they didn't do it in the way to where it can't come back. They do it in a way to where it leaves, but then it come back on you. And then they blame that on you saying, well, you just didn't have enough faith. Or, well, you open that door again or well you are married to the wrong person and they keep sinning and you're going to pay the price for their sins but the lord he loves you so much that he has supernatural grace for you and supernatural deliverance to where when you get delivered you're going to be delivered you're going to be delivered you know how you get you're going to remember back when you were sick or when you were in bondage or when you were in whoredoms Whatever your sin is, whatever your sickness is, whatever your separation is from Christ to where you're not whole, you're going to remember all the years that you suffered in that, and then you're going to you're going to not take God for granted. You're going to know beyond a shadow of doubt that He delivered you. You're going to have a witness, a testimony, and um, you're also going to be able to stand in uh, the power of His might because I'm going to pray some things over you and I'm going to teach you how to stand in the power of his might and if you'll stay connected to the vine the Lord is going to do great things for you and I know that you probably have many people that you look at and that's fine you know he's going to send you to the ones that's feeding you right but there are some things that's got to be handled in the holiest of holies through the judicial courts in heaven and uh, through deliverance and some people are not going to know how to do this for you uh, and they can pray a hundred different prayers and pray repetition prayers and uh, pray in the spirit and all these things but if they don't know if the Holy Spirit hadn't taught them how to pray on certain things then they really just don't know how to do it it's not that they're not have an anointing because they do everybody has anointing for different things the Lord has given me anointings for special things and um, the way he did it with me is that I had to go through it he didn't just give me an anointing no I had to take the kingdom by force I had to go through the courts of heaven I had to make my way up to the Lord I had to obey him every step of the way and I had to fight and press my way through and I'm telling you it has not been easy but I wouldn't have had it any other way because I love him and I want everything he has for me. And by God, I'm not going to just sit down and let Satan do whatever he wants to me and to my family. I'm just not going to allow it. So I step up and I take the bull by the horns and I'm putting that joker down. We've been putting him down and the Lord is very proud of you. One time a lady told me, she said, don't ever say that word proud. The Lord don't like that word proud. No, he don't like the word pride. Don't have pride before him. Pride is rebellion. If a person that is in pride has a spirit of Leviathan with all his shield demons, but the Lord can be very proud of you. And that's a good thing. And he is. He's very proud of you. He's proud of you for having faith. He's proud of you for loving his um, teacher. He's proud of you for loving Jesus. He's proud of you for wanting hunger for the word. He's proud of you that you are seeking for deliverance. He's proud of you that you're seeking to know the things of God. And that you don't want to be caught by surprise with what's going to be coming onto the earth. That you want to know about the day of the Lord. You want to know about the great tribulation. You want to know what it's going to take for you to escape that. And the Lord said he's going to be taking you through some things that you would have never dreamed. And he's going to be unveiling things to you that you didn't even know were lies. See, if we believe a lie, or if we're caught up in a lie, or if we just are living in a place of where there's a lot of darkness, or we're under a lot of satanic abuse, verbal abuse, and different abuses, um... It can really take a toll on us and it can wear us down to where we can't see the light of day or where we can't see through. And though we have great faith in God, sometimes we just can't hear Him and we just can't get over that hump. But I'm here to help you over the humps.
the dumps, the quagmires, the holes, the pits, the pots, the uh, cauldrons and the bowls of them witchcraft spells, the curses. I'm here to help you over, jump over a hurdle and climb a wall. I'm here to help you to go up the stairs into the secret place in the cleft of the rock. I'm here to help you climb all the way up to the bridal chamber in heaven where he took me in. That was the first time that I really knew that. See, for years I had been ascending and descending back and forth from heaven to earth. I didn't really know what was going on, but um, I would see angels all the time and um, it was just great things he was doing with me, but I didn't really realize what was going on with that until 2020 when the Lord actually, I, I went all the way to the third heaven into God's castle. He has a big castle and I was in a, a room. It was my bedroom in God's castle. You have a room in God's castle. His castle is so big. If you're going home to heaven and you know that you're born again, you have a room in God's castle. It was my bedroom in his castle. It was called the bridal. It was the bridal chamber for me. It had a closet and it had my garments that I had won through warfare here on the earth. I had a gown of salvation, a robe of righteousness, garments of praise. I had different shoes. I had a uh, the sword of the spirit. I had uh, different swords and I had a bow and arrow um, where I pull it back and shoot the darts of love over. In, he used to have me shoot the darts of love over into the enemy's camp all the time. When those witches would come after me to try to kill me and stuff, I would send the fear, the spirit of the fear of the Lord into their camp and I would pull that bow back and I would shoot arrows of love to go into hit them in their heart and some of them they would just mourn and cry the Lord would show it to me and in the spirit he would send me to them and uh, they were wanting the power that's what they wanted that's usually what every witch wants they want the power of God and the Lord would say uh, tell them that you'll tell them how to get the power and then I would hold my hands out and I said you want the power and they'd be like yes and I'd say, give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I would say that, many of them would just cower and go back. And some of them, they would just run away. And then some of them would just stand there with their eyes spinning. They, didn't, they just couldn't comprehend that Jesus Christ is the way. See, there's a great deception on the earth right now. And um, a lot of people have just came into believing in Christ. They know that he is who he says he is. And they fear going to hell. But there's more to him than just knowing who he is and fearing to go into hell. He is the grandest thing that ever happened. I'm telling you right now, I was a wild child. He is the grandest thing that ever happened to me. I can't even explain all the great things that he has done for me and that he's still doing for me and how comical he is he is so comical he the father is like a comedian one night all night long he kept me up telling me jokes he was telling me your mama jokes i'm not joking the father he was telling me your mama jokes and yeah you've heard of those mama your mama jokes like your mama is so big that she plays pool with the planets or, or um, your mom is so big when she walks in her high heels, she strikes oil because <laughs> she's so heavy, it pushes it down. But he was telling me that my, your mom, I didn't even know what your mama jokes were. And that was like in 2006. And all night long I stayed up and him and Christ was telling me all these jokes. And I just lay in the bed and laugh and listen to him. God is grand. He is so grand. And he's not so high and mighty that he can't come down and spend time with you that's what he wants he wants you to invite him into your home and it don't matter if you're married and what your spouse is doing he it does not matter he just wants to be with you your spouse can be out rolling in the mud like a pig god don't care he does not he just wants to spend time with you you love him you're his daughter or you're his son and he's not straining on that you're not perfect. He's not straining on that you may still have sin. He is not. See, Jesus paid the price for your sin. One of the things that's wrong with us is we just don't spend time with God. 
do you know however much time you spend with him on this earth, how much ever you loved him and spent time with him, that's how close you will be to him in eternity. And if you didn't hardly know God during your lifetime, you're certainly not going to know him in eternity. There's people, I am not joking, in heaven, there are people that got through just because they believed on Christ, they got in, but they never knew him. They didn't even know his word or anything. And they have to stand in these long lines. And they have to eat the fruit from the trees. And it takes them years before they really get to go and meet great God Jehovah. They get to dance with Jesus Christ. When they first get there, there's a golden road. And I think it's called Hallelujah Boulevard. But they get to hold hands with Jesus and dance down Hallelujah Boulevard with him when they go in. Because there's elevators there. When you come in, you come up that elevator and you get off. And um, there's like kiosk and port. Like there's a... Uh, things that you can ride on but you they come in either through the elevator on this kiosk and when they come in their names are up on a bulletin board their bulletin boards are turning all the time saying so and so like um miss uh olivia um newton john she will be coming home on and it tells the day you know she passed away last year and suzanne summers the lord gave a prophecy who i feel the fire god the Lord gave a prophecy on Suzanne Summers when she passed away this past uh, fall. She pa it said, he said she would go in the fall and that there would be a great fall in the fall when summer is over. When Suzanne Summers passed away, he told me, he said, when, and I saw Suzanne Summers, he said, when summer is over, there will be a great, the great fall will come. And sure enough, Suzanne Summers passed away right there at the time of fall or right before fall at the end of summers when she passed away last year and the great fall is happening see we're in the great apostasy that's the great falling away and so you're going to see people in your family that are going to be falling away and they're going to be almost children of perdition the son of perdition they are going to have the antichrist spirit in them they're going to talk like the devil they're going to be like a judas iscariot some of them um and they're not going to be nice to you but there's one thing that god has that was going to help you is that in their heart he's got a measure of love for you in their heart and he's got a covenant if you're in a marriage a true marriage where you're married to the person he's got a covenant of marriage where you're in that man's heart or you're in that woman's heart and the Lord's not gonna let them just do you any of which way the Lord is gonna start making them pay for the things they do and he's gonna be blessing you and he's gonna be bringing you out um I don't know if this makes any sense to you or not. And there's some of you that are so hungry for the things of God, but at the same time, you have a lot of questions. And you don't know who to believe. For everybody saying different things. Some people, I heard a lady that yesterday say that we have over 200 years before Christ comes. Now, I know for a fact that's not true. Then another lady said there was over 100 that she saw was over 100 years. I know that's not true either because the Lord took me to the day of judgment. Now, I don't know if you trust me or not, but I'm never going to lie to you. And he gave me this thing inside of me. It's that ephod with that urim and thummim, and it's the scales. And if I lie, it enters into my belly like a sharp sword and it hurts me so bad I have to fall down on my knees and cry out for mercy to the Lord and say oh God a lie I've said a lie or a lies in me and I have to repent and it, it he's got that set up so I can't lie against him I can't have guile in my mouth if you read about the 144,000 they were perfect before God they didn't have any guile in their mouth they were holy virgins. It means they were never corrupted with false doctrine. I can't have a false doctrine in me. He won't allow it. 
It would kill me. I'm telling you, if I let a false doctrine grow inside of me, it'd kill me. And I know immediately if a false doctrine tries to get inside of me because I, I get very deathly ill. It'll come on me so quick and my stomach will hurt so bad. It'll just feel like somebody's ripping my guts out. And I have to cry out. So the Lord has taught me. I'm very careful to spend time with Christ and to hear Him. I listen to the Father, to Jesus, and to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my very best friend. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, my King and High Priest. And I answer to Him on everything. And then the Father, He is over me in all things, according to my soul my mind my spirit my flesh body everything i de dedicated to him and i take everything to the father to jesus and to the holy spirit so if you trust me i have a lot of things that i want to the lord he has a lot of things he wants to teach you that he wants to give into you and i know there's not many people look at my channel but you know what i talked to him again about that this morning he told me he has it this way he told me he was protecting me. He told me that this is his will. That he only is going to send me a select few. And they're special people. Now, I'm not trying to butter you up and say like you're something great. But he's talking to me about that. He says that he has his eye on you. You know, his eye was on the sparrow. How much some more is his eye on you? And he's not, um, he don't want a bunch of riffraff on my channel. And he... This channel is his, and he he only is going to be ministering to the very elect, to those that he believes, beyond a shadow of a doubt, can be his very special uh, people, that you are peculiar people, special unto the Lord, and you, he knows that many of you had to suffer greatly. He showed me some of you are suffering still now in your flesh, in your body, that you don't feel good, you just feel like you could unzip your skin suit and just take it off we're waiting to be caught up he was talking to me this morning about that you know he had got on to me years ago when i first found out about that rapturo doctrine and i was very young in christ i'd only been saved it was maybe in 2008 so i'd only been saved about three years and i heard some preachers talking about it on tv so christ was just standing in my corridor i was and I said, Lord, what is that uh, rapturo doctrine? And you know what? He got very angry. He said, don't you ever say that word to me. And then he left. He just left. And I, I held my head down. I said, okay, Lord. And then the Holy Ghost came. And I said, why was Jesus so mad about that word? He said, well, he said, the Lord does not call it that. And I'm like, but everybody in the world calls it that. And he said, well, the Lord don't call it that. And don't ever say it in front of him. And I'm like, really? He said, no. He said, call, call it being caught up. He said, I want you to go and look that word up. So I went and I looked that word up. And it had some weird meanings. One of it was like um, euphoric, uh, euphoria, like high, like being high, euphoric. One of the meanings was the violent snatching. And um, so the Holy Spirit talked to him and he said, it's not going to be a violent snatching and it's not going to be a euphoric high for the bones that are going to be took out of the graves. He's like, it's not going to be a euphoric high for them. You can't violently snatch a a body out of a grave that's what he told me he said the word is all wrong he said it's not in the bible and it wasn't in the old hebrew or in greek he said that they translated that wrong and it was supposed to be caught up being caught up unto the lord being translated transfigured and it's going to be the same as how when jesus stood on the mount of transfiguration he was transfigured and it's going to all happen at one time on the seventh trump. The Lord took me and showed me. And the horn was blasted. And it was blah. The whole earth, the horn, when they were blowing those horns, it was the seventh trump. When they were, I was there. When they were blowing the horns, it was so loud. 
that it was radiating through the earth. There were people living in caves and in dens and in bunkers. There was the government was under bunkers down in the ground and the, all the buildings were broke down in America and there was hardly any lights and they'd look like there'd been nuclear bombs and it was just looked really bad on the earth. And, um, and uh, I feel the glory of God on my head while I'm telling y'all this. See, it's true. Every time the Lord gives me... The, I have these testimonies because he takes me in the spirit and lets me be there. It is not the same as just seeing it in the spirit. He does time travel with me, I'm telling you. And if you want to be able to do that, I can do impartations. He did not give me the anointing and give me all the gifts for me to hold on to them. He gave me the stuff to do impartations with y'all and to get y'all caught up. Uh, to where <laughs> to get you caught up both ways caught up to him and caught up in time caught up to in the word <laughs> he wants to catch you up catch you up in all the ways a man can be caught up do you hear what i'm saying but he hates that word and so he told me so i asked him i was like why did you only tell me not to say that word why don't you tell the church not to say that word i i talked to him like that i'll be like you know, I don't try to sugarcoat it and say, Lord, why don't you tell the church not to say that word? No, I'm mad about it. I'm like, why didn't you tell the church to say that, not to say that word? And he said, I told you not to say it, and there's a reason for it. And I was like, well, I'm going to pray that the church quit saying it. I'm going to tell everybody, don't say that word. Call it being called up. That's what the word says. Don't call it that R-A-P to you. Um, R-E because it's not in the word and it's the same as saying a lie when it's not in the word if we say words that are not in the word it is not the truth so we have to say the truth the truth is being transfigured being caught up uh, he took Enoch up he caught up Elijah he, Jesus Christ was translated and caught up he ascended Okay, so there's ascensions, and the Jesus told me this morning there's going to be many ascensions, that there's going to be many, ch uh, the, the children, oh my gosh, he was talking to me about the children this morning, about, I told him, I was like, Lord, everybody's teaching that three days of darkness, and you hadn't said to me not one word about three days of darkness, you've showed me three years of darkness, <laughs> and and I was like, I need for you to verify this for me because I, I think maybe they're calling it three days, but I don't think it's three days. I think it's that last three and a half years that we're going to be on the earth. I think it's going to be three and a half years of darkness, not of three days. But anyway, there could be the three days like in the Exodus. I don't know, but I told him I want him to verify that to me, even though he's took me in the spirit and showed me the day of the Lord the day of the catching away, he showed me uh, many people are going to be there. Their angel is going to land in front of them, and their angel is going to carry them up. Not everybody's going to send. Remember Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24 at the end of those days that he would send his angels out to gather up the very elect. The very elect they have to be gathered up by the angels the very elect cannot uh be uh, caught up in the same way that other people are going to be caught up because the very elect have to continually work on the earth now some of the very elect will lose their lives and some but they really won't lose their life they'll just translate from earth to heaven but uh, many of the very elect are being uh being caught up going back and forth back and forth now like i've been going back and i've been and i don't call it being um rapturoed out because it's nothing violent about it okay but he's been catching me up for years this is 2024 like i've been being caught up since 2012 that's 12 years Heaven is, is spectacular, but I have, I'm having to take a lady to court. Y'all know her. Her name is Kat Kerr, and I think her real name is Catherine, but I have to go to the Father. I heard Jesus this morning. I was talking to him. I was like, Lord, 
I want you to tell me the truth about her. She's telling people we got 200 years before you come. And she gave a prophecy that Donald Trump would uh, recover his presidency for being the 46th president of the nation. And she got on TV and said, Thus saith the Lord, Donald Trump shall be our 46th president. He shall be our 45th president, our 46th president, and our 47th president. I said, and her prophecy failed. He is not our 46th president, and that's a false prophet. And I said, and she's telling people, she just told people yesterday, we have 200 years before the Lord comes. I said, and you took me in the spirit yourself and showed me that it's soon, like within just 12 years. Like we are at the end of time. And, and you showed it to me, and you verified it to me multiple times. You even let the, he, he had to make sure I knew what he was showing me was true because the fires were falling and one it fell on my arm and burned my arm and it burned my leg and that's how i knew for sure this was real that he took me because when i woke up i had it on my arm and my leg where i was really there he took me really he time traveled me really to the to the great and uh where, where the the seventh trump blew so we were already in the great day of the lord where he was doing the judgments on the earth and there had been great wars, and there was no electricity in the United States. Hardly. There was a few buildings that had light, but most of them didn't have light and stuff like that. And the buildings were broke down, and I was in another city. I wasn't even living where I live now. And he also took me in the spirit and showed me there would be a nu some kind of nuclear attack. And um, I was driving a red truck. This was in 2012. He... And I was uh, wiping that snow that, uh, you know, that sn after snow that comes after a nuclear bomb. I was wiping the snow off the boxes and I was just stacking it in the back of that truck and getting in my truck and driving it and taking it to shelters and pe poor people that were just laying around. They all had uh, radiation poisoning and I wasn't even sick. It didn't even make me sick. I didn't have any radiation poisoning. And I was the only one, like, in that whole vicinity that was able to even stand up under it. And I was just going and loading that stuff up and bringing it back. And I was finding boxes everywhere because, like, all the Walmart buildings were busted down. And, like, I would just go by and just get whatever people, what I could get in that truck. And then I'd take it back to where the people were. And I was delivering that food and all that stuff. And But um, he's been showing me stuff for years. And I told y'all I was going to get on and give y'all some of these prophecies. And he's wanting to get y'all ready for the things that are coming he wants to get you sanctified and he's telling me that um hang on just for a minute let me pray father there was something i wanted to tell them but it slipped my mind in order to be caught up you can't have sin you won't get caught up, and, and he won't be able to catch you away if you have sin in you. And another thing, uh, the children. This morning, uh, well, I wanted to finish telling you about Kat Kerr, too, so i got to take her to court. i got to go into the courts, and I've got to go and find out who this lady is because I heard Jesus Christ this morning telling me when I was talking to him about her, and he told me, he said, you can't believe all the... every. Um, you can't trust everybody. You can't believe them all. When I asked him specifically about this lady, was she his prophet? And uh, he said, you can't believe everything you hear. And you, you can't believe them all. So he was saying no. He wouldn't go against her. Like He's not going to talk bad about anybody. So now i got to take it to the father in the high courts because I've got to know if this lady is the real deal because she's teaching that we have 200 years. And I have, I have a bone to pick with that because that's not what God has shown me. And if somebody's teaching false gospel, then I take them to court in God's court. I have to. That's one of my jobs. He gave me that job, and I'm not going to quit. I'm going to do what he tells me to do. Okay? Okay? And another thing, he taught me about the children. And I don't know if you know this, but for years I've been praying that he would not leave one child and one animal behind when he catches up the church when he catches the church away that he takes all the children and the animals because i don't want the evil ones to hurt the children or the animals hang on just a minute i'll feed you in just a second i've got to feed these cats i have a few cats in the house and it's time for them to eat i forgot to feed them 
but anyway, um, he told me that uh, about that. I was talking about the three days of darkness that I wanted him to verify to me those three days of darkness. And he started talking to me about taking the children. And he was talking to me, and I was saying, are you taking the children 11 and under? And he started saying six and under, six and under. And I'm like, six? No, take them like 12 and under, 11 and under. And he was saying six. And I was like, oh my gosh. So now i got to take these things to the Lord and pray and make sure this stuff is the truth. Because I just heard this this morning. But he's also... Um, He's wanting to get you filled with the Holy Spirit, with the seven spirits of the Lord. That's Isaiah 11, 2. And um, he's wanting you to start saying the Lord's Prayer every day. It's an activation prayer. He's wanting you to repent for your spouses and for your family. He's wanting you to take communion every day. He's wanting you, the very first scripture Jesus Christ ever gave me, and he was sitting beside me. He was standing up when he said it, and then we came over here and sat on the couch, and he opened the Bible, and he just turned the Bible without even having to touch the pages. He said, take uh, the whole armor of God and put it on, and he wants you to learn Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6 and learn how to take his armor and put it on. It's not just words that we say. It's, act, it's, act, it's the activation. When you take it and you, you call it down, the angels will clad that stuff on you. And then he said he wants you to take everything to his footstool. And he gave me that. And um, he also, i got to take Kat Kerr to court to find out if her, what she's preaching is true or not. Um, he's had me pray for Hank and Brenda Kuhneman, Timothy Dixon and Rose, the Bullock family in Alabama, the Hagees in Texas. And he says all of these must come arise and meet with Jesus Christ early in the morning before daylight that it is mandatory that if these are going to continue to walk with him they're going to have to come into the most secret place to meet with the Lord and he said that uh, Hank Kuhneman will only be able to get the golden belts of truth by getting in his prayer closet with the Lord that the Lord is not going to continue to give him the supernatural downloads of the past like he used to just uh, standing in front of a congregation and talking and stuff like that, but he's but Hank Kuhneman and Brenda are gonna have to start coming to meet with Jesus way before daylight in their prayer closet in, in order to access the golden belts of truth. So he gave me that and I prayed that for them. And he said, This is his holy will, just as Jesus went before and did likewise he went to the father way before daylight the lord is requiring this of his prophets and his leaders and he said if you want to know christ and see him and hear him strong you must set your alarm and get up before dawn and a ways of before dawn give one to three hours of daily meeting with him taking communion also and he said many are sick among you for forsaken taking communion and for forsaking communing with the Lord he says we have we must do both and um, I was just sitting there about an hour later after he gave me all this stuff and I came in here and I was supposed to write some of it down and that was at like 4 30 this morning and I heard him say this is what Jesus Christ said to me he said we're almost there Mandy that's what he said I said, we're almost there, Lord. And I said, where is there? And he said, I'm the way. I'm there. He's talking. And then I heard John 14. You know how he says he went away to prepare a place for us that he will come back again to receive us unto himself? He's there. He's in Mount Zion. He's waiting on all of us. You can go there too. It's not just for the 144,000. It's for anybody that wants to go. Do you want to be caught up? You want to go home to be with the Lord? You want to ascend to Mount Zion and have rest for your soul? Forgive those that are hurting you. Forgive those that are mistreating you. Come out of sin, darling. Don't stay in sin. It's not worth it to sell thy soul to gain the whole world and, and lose thy soul let go of the sins of the flesh and for many of you it's the sins of the flesh for others of you you're very sick because your spouses are sinning 
It does. It causes us to be sick when our spouses stay in sin. So what we have to do when our spouses are staying in sin and we're sick, we have to repent their sins up and then we'll be healed. We have to forgive them and not have any bitterness. We have to really show the love of Jesus. And I want to help y'all. I'm going to get off now. I had some more stuff to give you. Gosh, look how many pages he gave me this morning. He gave me one, two, three full pages between 3 and uh, 5.30. 3 and 6. I'll come back on and give y'all the rest of the things he gave. But that little list I gave y'all, if you can, rewind that. Write that stuff down. I want you to start doing it. If you'll do this faithfully, I'm going to start doing some Zoom meetings with some of you guys and take y'all through deliverance to judge the principalities, uh, the demons, the spirits, and the evil that has uh, been plaguing you and your family. He wants to bring y'all through true deliverance, each one of you guys. But you've got to put in a little effort and do the things that he asked us to do. He asked us to take communion. Jesus said every time that you remember his death and his resurrection to take communion, he wants you to take, come and meet with him every day. He wants you to put on your whole suit of armor, Ephesians chapter 6. He wants you to pray for your family. Father said pray for your family and forgive all those that have all. And the Lord wants you to say the Lord's prayer for his activation prayer every day. And things will start changing for you. And he wants to make you whole and to heal you. All right. I bless y'all. May the Lord keep you and his face to shine upon you. And he says, we're almost there. We're almost there. He's got great things planned for thee. I love you so much. Mandy B. Signing off. Bye-bye.